So, you know, an image is a matrix of, you know, data that's rendered on a screen and as pixels and those pixels are different colors. And, you know, that's what an image is. Is it or is it is it the judgment of the creator? Well, no, I'm just saying an image in general. So like when, when Adobe Photoshop and digital photography ar arose, photographers were like, this is, you know, BS. Why are you digitizing photography with analog and beautiful before? And then what digital photography allowed is the photographer to do editing and to do work that was creative beyond what was possible with just a natural photograph taken through a camera. And they're arguably different art forms, but it was a new kind of art form that emerged through digital photography. And then in the early 90s, there was a plugin suite called Kai's Power Tools that came out in Adobe Photoshop. And it was a third party plugin set, you would you would buy it, and then it would work on Photoshop. And it did things like motion blur, sharpening, pixelation, all these interesting kind of like features. And prior to those tools coming out, the judgment of the digital artist, the digital photographer was to go in and do pixel by pixel changes on the image to make that pixel to make that image look blurry, or to make it look sharper, or to make it look like it had some really interesting motion feature. And the Kai's power tools created this instant toolkit where in a few seconds, you created a blur on the image. And that was an incredible toolkit. But a lot of digital artists said, this is automating my work. What is my point now? Why am I here? And the same happened in animation when three, um, when you know CGI came around and animators were no longer animating cells by hand. And in every point in this evolution, there was a feeling of loss initially, but then the evolution of a whole new art form emerged and an evolution of a whole new area of human creative expression emerged. And I think we don't yet know what that's going to look like do you think, with respect sorry, to what we're think, seeing here. Do you think the, the level of judgment that AI offers you is the same as the level of judgment that Kai Power Tools offered you? Yeah, look, I mean, I think that the person making the judgment or the decision about which pixel to change into what color felt like, you know, I have control. And I think it's ultimately like yeah, a sense I, of control. I just told her, I disagree with you. I mean, yeah. I think that this is... Yeah, it's is, a magnitude different. I remember the It's, a, it's more of than a magnitude different. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's a whole different Power level, Tools, yeah. it's still level, it's on you. you I, you, know, look, you, is, and I, you and I have sat in spreadsheets many way, times and, I, and we've... I'm generally happy with this idea. So I'll give you a different example. Today, we use radiologists and pathologists to identify cancers. Yep. There are closed-loop systems. We have one right now that's in front of the FDA. That is a total closed-loop system that will not need any human input. So I don't know what those folks do. Except what I can tell you is that we can get cancer detection basically down to a 0% error rate. That is not possible with human intervention. That right. is judgment. Right. So I just think it's important to really acknowledge that this is happening at a level that it's never happened before. You may be right that there's some amazing job for that radiologist or pathologist to do in the future. I don't know offhand what that is. But these are closed loop systems now that think for themselves and self improve. I get it. But I think that there there is an unfathomable set of things that emerge. We did not have the concept of Instagram influencers. We did not have the concept of personal trainers, we did not have the concept of like, all these new jobs that have emerged in the past couple of decades, that people enjoy doing that they can make money doing that is a greater kind of experience and level of fulfillment for those that choose and have the freedom to do it, than what they were ha having to do before, when they had to work just to make money. What do and you think that be... radiologist or pathologist wants to do be a trainer or a Pilates instructor? No, I think that's we crazy. don't know what that's going to look like. All I right, think you're having the same. Yeah. You, you have any thoughts on this as we wrap this topic? It's obviously a lot of passion coming out yeah, here with look, the I elimination of white collar jobs in a massive way. I think that this is a short term versus long term thing. In the short term, I see the benefits of AI being very positive because I don't think it's it, in most cases wiping out human jobs. This is making them way more productive. You still need the developer. It's just that they're five times or 10x more productive. But I don't think we're at the point in the short term where you're going to be able to eliminate that role entirely. And what I've seen in basically every startup I've ever been a part of is that the limiting factor on progress is always engineering bandwidth. That is always the the yeah. thing that you wish you had more of. Totally. It's the product roadmap is always the most competed on thing inside the organization. Everyone's trying to, you know, get their project prioritized because there's just never enough engineering bandwidth. It's really the lifeblood of the company. So if you make the developers more productive, it maybe it just accelerates the product roadmap. I just I don't think in the short term that what's going to happen is these companies are going to look to cut all their developers because one or two of them can do 10 times the work. I think that they're going to try and accelerate their product roadmaps. Now, 
Again, you have this long-term concern that maybe you don't need developers at all at some point. But I think that the benefits of developing this technology are so great in the short to midterm that we're going down that path no matter what. And we're just going to have to find out what that long-term really looks like. And maybe yeah, the long-term completely... will look very different. I mean, once, no, we're I can, in, I can... once we get past the short-term, we may have a different long-term view. I think in this narrow vertical, I 100% agree with you. Look, I, I think that AI is going to eliminate unit testing. It has already done so. It's going to eliminate most forms of coding. The engineers that you have, all of them will now become 10x engineers. So with fewer of them or with the same number, you'll be able to do as much or more than you could have before. That's a wonderful thing. And all I'm saying on that specific narrow vertical is you'll see it first rear its head in companies like Accenture and TCS because and Cognizant because they have an immediate incentive to use this tooling to drive efficiency and profitability that's rewarded by shareholders. It'll be less visible in other companies. So, But what I am saying, though, is that you have to think about the impact on the end markets for a second. And I think that AI does something that other technology layers have never done before, which is supplant human judgment in a closed loop manner. And I just think it's worth appreciating that there are many systems and many jobs that reply that rely on human judgment where we deal with error bars and an error rate that a computer will just destroy and blow out of the water. And we will have to ask ourselves, should this class of job exist with its inherent error rate or should it get replaced fully by a computer which has no error rate? And I think that's an important question that's worth putting on the table.